today I'm talking about entrepreneurship and business. Elsewhere on this YouTube channel of mine, I've talked about economics and entrepreneurship. Yes, I said economics and entrepreneurship are brothers from different mothers. Now I am saying entrepreneurship and business people, entrepreneurs and business people may be twins, but they are not identical twins. And I want to lecture about the same. Yes, entrepreneurs and business people both own ventures or enterprises. But perhaps that is where the similarities end and the differences begin. Now, if the two are products of education, then the philosophies of the education that produced them or produces them differ in detail and focus. Teaching business and related courses employs the coastal philosophy and mindset, while entrepreneurship employs effectual philosophy and mindset. Let's look at coastal that relates to business. The coastal or business logic, it argues that to the extent we can predict the future, we can actually control it. But the effectual or entrepreneurship logic argues differently. That to the extent we can work with things within our control, we don't need to predict the future. Look at them strictly. To the extent that we can predict the future, we can control it. That is business. To the extent we can work with things within our control, we don't need to predict the future. That's entrepreneurship. Business thinking, which is coastal reasoning, implies selecting between given means to achieve a predefined goal. Listen to me. Given means, the means have been given, and the goals have been defined. So we want to select from within those means, among those means, to achieve that predetermined goal. That is, we have been given a goal already set for us. We have been given means. It's a question of selecting which means to use to achieve that given goal. So the guiding question for a business person how do I manage or in economic terms allocate what I have to achieve this already determined goal? That is business. Let us look at entrepreneurial thinking, which is effectual reasoning. It is imagining possible new ends using a given set of means. You have the means, no goal has been set yet. You say, with this given means, which of these goals, or what can I achieve? Not which of these goals, what can I achieve? So the guiding question is, which goal can I achieve with what I have? Notice the difference again. How do I manage allocate how do I manage or allocate what I have to achieve an already determined goal a business but which goal can I achieve with what I have that's entrepreneurship so managing existing resources to achieve predetermined set of objectives that is business. But entrepreneurship we produce graduates 
good at identifying opportunities to feed the existing resources. Let me repeat. In business, we produce graduates that are good at managing existing resources to achieve predetermined goals. In entrepreneurship, we produce graduates who go out and identify opportunities to fit the existing resources. That is what we call causal logic for business and effectual logic for entrepreneurship. The means in causal logic, M1, M2, M3, Mx, the goal already predetermined Z. Selection, creation of means in order to reach a specific predetermined goal. That is business. Discovering potential goals and results based on a given set of means. That is effectual, that's entrepreneurship. We can simplify it. Entrepreneurship or effectual logic is a bird in the hand. Start with your means. So, both entrepreneurship and business teach the concepts of product life cycle, the PLC, and the ANS of matrix. Now, allow me to use this to elaborate on the difference of the two, between the two. But now, before I do that, let me make reference to Schumpeter's types of innovation. Schumpeter, who is largely regarded as the father of modern entrepreneurship, says there are three types or categories or areas of innovation. Product innovation, introducing a new good or a new quality of good. Process innovation, introducing a new method of production. Market innovation, opening off a new market. Input innovation, to conquer or the conquest of a new source of supply of raw materials or intermediate input. And lastly, organizational innovation, the carrying out of a new organization of industry. Now, let us look at the ants of matrix. That, there it is, familiar, that you have an old product or a new product. And there is the old market or a new market. Look at the top horizontal. Old product, new product. Look at the vertical. Old market, new market. Now, when you sell an old product in the old market or selling the same product in the same market, that is business. But new product, old market. When you sell a new product, you introduce a new product in the same market, you are now partially business and partially entrepreneurship. When you sell an old product in a new market, you identify a new market for your old product. Again, it's partial, partially business and partially entrepreneurship. But pure entrepreneurship is introducing a new product and introducing a new market for that product. This diagonal seems to tell us where business is, where entrepreneurship is. Above the diagonal, that's a business person. Someone who produces the same product over and over, selling the same market over and over, probably just penetrating the market, market penetration in the language of of matrix, that's a business person. Below the line, it is new product, new market, that's diversification. When you diversify, you get new products, 
new market. You add on the old product, you add a new product. On the old market, you identify new markets. You are being entrepreneurial. That marks some difference between business people and entrepreneurs. Business people keep selling, producing the same thing over and over, selling in the same market. That's business. Entrepreneurs improve the products, look for new markets, and becomes value addition. Well, it is not only me who thinks that way. Take a look at how this German colleague puts it. There it is. It's in German, let us superimpose it with English. He also thinks the same. Look at the bottom triangle, the red triangle. Look at the diagonal. That's the effectual domain. So, the red is entrepreneurship, and above the red is business. That is the source that I got this similar thinking like I have already spoken about. Now the purpose of teaching and the training is to work on entry behavior of the students and to develop an exit behavior for them. It is partially a mindset change. Let's put business and entrepreneurship on the map. That is the mindset change. Look at the bottom triangle and look at the, bot, the, the top triangle. The bottom is entrepreneurial bias and the top is the business bias. Look at the arrow. In business, in entrepreneurship, we start first by concept planning. Then we go to launch or establish the business. Then we operate and sustain the business. Entrepreneurship teaches more of planning and launching, establishing a new business. Business teaches more of operating, managing an already existing business. So definitely the philosophies, the focuses are different. And now let us look at the product life cycle. Here is the traditional business textbook product life cycle. Notice that it suggests product death at the decline stage. Look at it. The introduction, the growth, the maturity, and the decline. This is what business teaches. That's the traditional product life cycle. That a business will start, will grow, will mature, and will decline, and actually product can even be first off. That's what we teach in a business. But entrepreneurship does not teach too much about the decline stage. It teaches innovation. That is the product life cycle, the traditional business product life cycle. Entrepreneurship, when it introduces innovation, the, those innovations have the effects on this cycle. Extending the, 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 the PLC, extending the PLC, the dotted lines, so, continuous innovation destroys the old but replaces with the new product. So, in entrepreneurship, we are saying either you innovate or you perish. So, entrepreneurship does not focus, teach about decline stage. It teaches about rehabilitation of the business, innovating and reintroducing the product life cycle. Alternatively, if it is not one product, then you can see the red cycle, product A, entrepreneurs introduce product, and when it is maturing, 
through innovation, they introduce another one. If the former one is declining, product B is introduced and it grows. Product C and on and on. So even if the old product dies, innovation forces the entrepreneur to continue in business. Let us look at an example. Nokia. The Nokia product, Nokia life cycle. I am sure as I speak now, very few people of you, particularly in Africa, in Kenya, we have a Nokia handset. I'm told it must even have been sold. That is how Nokia behaved. And it is said from that source that I've shown that there was little innovation. Look, 1995 to 2002 was the introduction of Nokia. 2002, 2009, the growth. You can see new Nokias were coming up. But it reached a decline from 2011 to now. It has actually declined and got up because of, I am told, lack of innovation. So the Nokia story, there it is. The business product life cycle of Nokia started, grew, matured, and declined. We don't have Nokia too much on the market now. How about Samsung? Samsung, let's use the television. It started flat television. It grew, but innovation brought on a new ultra slim fit TV. So as the flat TV was declining, a new one comes in. And that is how Samsung is behaving. So Nokia and Samsung are two products that we can use to show which ones were in business and which was in entrepreneurship. And of course, there are a number of types of entrepreneurs. Look at those curves. The first, we're calling the flat. You look the red. It is survivalist. These entrepreneurs just invest very little in their business and barely operate above the bread line, as you can see. Then there is the lifestyle entrepreneurs. They use their own or families or friends' money. They create a growth-oriented business but reach Somewhere and they, they stay out. They become, they plateau. There are growth entrepreneurs who borrow externally and invest for growth. And lastly, there is the revolutionaries. So these cycles show that entrepreneurs also come in in their own categories. Finally, let me now tabulate the difference between an entrepreneur and a business person. Both of them own an enterprise. An entrepreneur or a business person, both they own, they own enterprises. If a business person is usually profit-oriented, then the entrepreneur is customer-oriented. They focus more on the customer and the profit will follow. Businessman uses the same old technology or processes to keep re, uh, producing what they produced, but entrepreneurs employ new technology, new processes. A business person sells the same product in the same market over and over. An entrepreneur creates new product, improves on the new product even if he or she is selling it in the same old market, but they do not uh, enjoy status quo. They do not focus on comfort zone. An entrepreneur looks for new markets for the old product. An entrepreneur creates new product for new market. That's the difference. They sell differently. They sell in a different way. They sell, they add value to what they are selling. They do not, uh, they are not satisfied with repeatedly selling the same product like we saw Nokia. A business person adopts an existing organization. Our students of business, they go and are employed 
in an existing organization. In entrepreneurship, we do not expect that our students are going to work in an existing, existing organization. If they are, then we shall call them entrepreneurs. They are going to innovate, improve on those. But basically, an entrepreneur, we teach them to start their own new businesses, not to copy what is already existing. A business person is driven by resources that they have currently. But an entrepreneur is driven by perception of opportunity, regardless of the resources. And, and a business person uses the same old inputs, the same old raw materials. But an entrepreneur generates new inputs, generates uh, new materials. We can also go further and compare an entrepreneur and a manager. An entrepreneur is an owner manager. An entrepreneur is the owner of, the, of his own business. But a manager is a servant. A manager is an employed person. He serves an employer. An entrepreneur, as a reward, earns a profit from his or her business. But a manager earns a salary. The reward to a manager's a salary, the reward to an entrepreneur's profit. An entrepreneur full risk bearing but a manager may take risk but he takes the risk on behalf of the owner so the bearing of the risk is not necessarily the manager's business they take risk but eventually the person who gets the burden of the risk is the entrepreneur an entrepreneur looks and manages all the functions in the business. In most cases, they are owner managers. But a manager has got selective functions. You can have a marketing manager, production manager, human resource manager, etc., etc., etc. An entrepreneur is an innovator, always adding value. A manager is an executor, simply executes what uh, has been given. And finally, most entrepreneurs eventually become business owners. What am I saying? That when many entrepreneurs grow and become successful, their posture does change and they become or look like business owners. Some become venture capitalists and others philanthropists. They delegate the function of innovation in the business to entrepreneurs. So, perpetual entrepreneurship is hard, but it's doable. So even people who start as entrepreneurs eventually get successful and employ others to do the entrepreneurial function for them. And in conclusion, many countries are inaccurate when they consider their small and medium enterprises policies to be entrepreneurship policies. An SME policy is not necessarily an entrepreneurship policy. Let us look at entrepreneurship versus SME policy. The bottom yellow line is showing the business startup line, the, the timeline of a business startup. It starts from an awareness phase, it goes to the nascent phase, then the startup phase, then the post-startup phase, and finally the maintenance phase. Now, the SME policy, as you can see, focuses from the startup phase to the business existing and growing. The awareness phase is not captured by uh, an SME policy. Indeed, the best business models and the companies with the most innovation all started with an awareness, 
all start with an individual who believed that the future success of their industry will look very different from its current state. So, entrepreneurship policy starts way before the startup. It starts by skills, by motivation, by identifying opportunities, and then, like I said, it is likely that when an entrepreneur starts after the startup and they're comfortable, they may fall off and become business people. For today, I want to thank you for watching. If you want to book me for corporate training, you can contact me through those phones. Those are Kenyan code 254-723-253009 or 254-7228-58507. You can reach me by email mukmikcon at gmail.com You can reach me at wehem at gmail.com You can also visit my website www.mukmik.co.ke I hope I have convinced you that there are similarities between a business person and an entrepreneur but an entrepreneur stands out business person stands out when we are talking about a typical entrepreneur a typical business person they may be twins but they are not identical twins thank you for listening